Bunch of quits, tell me where you at. Your motivation guy is back. That's right, man. I'm your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. I'm so hyped up because, man, this could be your best year yet if you can just believe, if you could believe. I'm telling you, man, you could do anything you want in this season, but you got to put that grind in and you got to have confidence, okay? Listen, I'm here to bring you guys the latest and greatest tips that's going to make you guys the best player ever. Arena is open and the competitive season is underway, so you guys got to be excited to start competing right away, right? But, you know, there are still, you know, a lot of us that are trying to get up to speed and just trying to find the best way to get better at FPS. After all, like, you have to work with the hardware you have, and not everyone has the resources to pick up the highest, you know, NPCs. So today, we're going to be here to really help you guys make the most out of what you got. Are you guys ready for this? Because if you are, then it's time to get that bunch of crunch, and let's get this going. All right, guys, so FPS is one of the most important things that you need to keep in mind when going competitive. This little counter can really determine if you can actually put your skills to use. You know, as the years go by, standards are set for what the normal FPS should be for any game. 30 used to be like the good standard until PC could just crank games up to 60. Now, 60 is the standard with plenty of hardware options for, you know, making it go up to 120 and beyond. So how does, you know, the FPS affect you exactly? Well, let me say this, just like how other games can run smoother, you need to make sure that you you can see everything that is happening in a game just as smoothly as the other person. And so this can help you react to enemies quicker, keep up the pace with building, and just have an overall better experience. Fortnite is not a terribly difficult game to run. However, it is also quite different from the Fortnite that we knew back in Chapter 2 and definitely vastly different from Chapter 1. Graphics are getting better, effects are improving, and there are just plenty of new features that really make the game pop visually. So another way to really boost your FPS without messing with the settings is to use a simpler skin. You know, Fortnite skins come in all shapes and all sizes and even from different franchises. There's nothing like playing as your favorite character in this battle royale and honestly, it's just one of the staples of the game. However, you also must keep in mind that as far as, you know, gameplay goes, no one skin gives a clear advantage over the other. However, some skins will lower your FPS by a small bit, you know, just due to their details and special effects. And so because of this, many pros tend to use simpler skins that don't have any additional animations or reactions. You know, pickaxes are also, you know, just clumped into this category with some of the simpler pickaxes giving you smoother performances. In addition to these, you also want to get rid of any back blings while you're at it and really revert your weapon camos from reactive to basic. In fact, you should also try to do the same with your gliders. If you haven't been redeploying, then the only time that you ever pull out your glider will be at the very start of the game during the initial landing, right? However, for pros, they will often redeploy so that they can rotate, scan the area, and even even just escape combat. So rather than having a bombastic, you know, glider that just takes up half the screen and really has flames coming out of it as well, like just try to set something simpler, such as an umbrella. Uh, these are usually the top choice amongst pros due to their simplicity and ease of deployment. Do this and you're gonna find yourself maintaining a better FPS count even when you wanna use your glider. So a better FPS means a much smoother aiming experience. So why not back it up with some training by clicking on the link below and checking out Aim Lab. This fully customizable program is used by pros in a variety of different, you know, competitive games such as Valorant, Warzone, and even yours truly, Fortnite. With dozens of routines to get you into top tier shape, you're going to be able to identify your own shortcomings and start tackling your skills, man, especially in the areas where you need the most. PCs come with a variety of different parts, processors, and graphic cards. So if your computer is quite beefy with the latest parts, then you should have no trouble hitting a high FPS without changing too many settings. However, not everybody has their hands on that kind of hardware, man. And sometimes you need to get rid of a few settings in order to raise that FPS to an acceptable level. All right, so what exactly is an acceptable level? Good question. In most cases, you want more than the standard 60 FPS. In fact, that sweet spot is like 144 FPS, since usually you're gonna find more affordable monitors that have a refresh rate of 144. And this is really great for playing comp. Anything after 144 will usually run you more since you're gonna need a better monitor to even just take advantage of those speeds. So what settings should we even get rid of first? Hmm. Well, for starters, you're not gonna just be playing on the highest settings, so this is just going to read as a custom, all right? For view distance, you're not going to be running on epic and instead turn this down to medium or far. This should still give you guys the ability to see what's going on in the distance while also making 
easy on your hardware. However, if you don't have that good of a PC, don't be afraid to really set it to near. The important thing here, and I mean like right here, is to make sure things run smoothly. So the next item on this list is shadows, and you're going to want to turn these off. Shadows are not like entirely necessary for the competitive experience, and just cutting them is going to be ideal. If you're picky though, and you want your game to look nicer, then by all means, set it to medium, and you're gonna still get the benefits of lowering these settings. Anti-aliasing helps your game look sharper so you can just see those edges less. You know, most of the time, you're gonna want this on high so your game can look good. However, lowering this can be beneficial for you guys, so just try setting it to medium. The same really applies for textures, effects, and post-processing. You know, setting all these to low is gonna take weight off your PC. However, the best thing to do here would be to see what your PC is capable of. For this, you wanna leave your FPS unlocked for the time being so you can just see what the max would be. Then just start lowering these settings until you get an FPS that runs your game smoothly because, you know, these are just different settings that you can just really mix and match as you see fit. For example, like if you do prefer higher texture qualities and your game is already getting decent FPS, then you can just raise it a bit as long as it doesn't bring your FPS down too much. All right, if you can, turn on your FPS cap. This is gonna help you maintain the frame rate rather than have it fluctuating. You know, an unlimited frame cap sounds good on paper since you can potentially have the highest frame rates possible during a match. However, the opposite is also true. And if you're running unlimited, then you can see the frames crash as well. And this can be terrible if you are in a heated moment with your opponent. So what we here at ProGuys recommend is setting your FPS cap above what your monitor is capable of. Why is that? Well, when you lock your FPS at, let's say 144, a 144 HD monitor, the game is gonna try to maintain it at that count. However, you might still see some slight dips, and so this is why it's just better to have it just above, since now, even if it dips, you're still gonna be playing to your full potential. You know, one very popular way to boost your FPS is to switch to a stretch resolution. What exactly does that mean? All right, well, in most cases, you play games using the settings for that fit for your monitor. For example, one standard would be 1920 by 1080. However, pros have found out that by stretching it out a bit, they can essentially make it so there's just less going on on their screens. This means the game has to process less pixels at a time and instead can really put that power into boosting your FPS. So if you're new to competitive, then it might seem strange for anybody to want to lower their display resolution. After all, most games look their best when you're playing them at the highest settings. However, Competitive players will always be trying, you know, just to one-up you, you know, uh, by getting better frames, even if it means just getting accustomed to a lower resolution. And so this is the mindset you're gonna need to have, especially if you wanna participate in competitions using less powerful hardware. However, don't worry guys, as long as you just know the difference between resolutions, I'm telling right now, then you're gonna be soon find out that it's not all that bad. If you're looking for an optimal stretch resolution, 1600 by 1080 is a popular choice amongst pros. The game is still playable and you still get to see most of the things on screen without making it look ugly. Not only that, but it also makes targets appear larger while, you know, not actually resulting in bigger hitboxes. It does help you psychologically really prepare for a fight. Only our recommendation is that you pay extra attention to sounds and movement so you can just quickly turn and just face in the right direction when engaging an enemy or just trying to spot them from afar. However, if you prefer to have it closer to 1920 by 1080 but still want to just take advantage of the FPS boost, try 1720 by 1080. You're going to notice that this is going to stress the display less and you're going to be able to see those fps numbers bump up guys do not forget to check out aim lab if you want to become an aim legend remember guys the most adaptive pros are always going to find a way to improve their skills whether it be through creative mode exercise routines or even coaching but your crush saw me. That's it for today's video. Once again, it's your friend, the one and only Keith Allen, your motivation guy. Make sure to stay grinding, keep going, apply these, you know, these tips and the, the things that we've taught you guys today, man, to get the best FPS, to get the best results possible because you deserve it. If you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel and we'll see you on the next one. Peace.